guys, Rubber Tramp Renegade, Seth here. Just wanted to give you a quick tour of my electrical system. I know I went over it um, before in my previous video real briefly, but I want to go more in depth and show you what makes my 12 volt system work and how I use 12 volt when I'm in the van. Okay, so I'm here at the front of the van and under the hood, I'll, I'll get the camera down here and show you guys, but I've got a regular 12 volt battery here and you know a starting battery just you know whatever your vehicle calls for something to crank it over when it's cold start it um, and then I also have an auxiliary battery right here this auxiliary battery is a 100 amp hour deep cycle battery I'll try to post a link to that um, so you can see what I'm using but basically I have two batteries under the hood when I designed my electrical system, I was originally going to put the batteries in the van. I was either going to put it right behind the seat or in the very back of the van. And I decided for storage purposes, I'd just try to fit it under the hood. I moved some things around. Actually, this van came with four horns on it. I don't know why you need four horns, but I took two of them off that were mounted on the fender well. And I put a battery tray there and then put my extra battery in the battery tray and it, it fits perfect so I'm glad I decided to put it um, under the hood. The next thing I have under here is a Stinger 200 battery isolator. It's it's about this big, I'll, I'll, you know it's not very big, I'll try to show you up close here in a minute. But basically what that does is when your alternator charges your starting battery and your starting battery is full, it allows the power to go over to your auxiliary battery but the important thing is that it isolates that battery when you turn your ignition off so when you turn your ignition off the solenoid moves it breaks that connection and basically you can run all your power in your van and even if you run your auxiliary battery down you're gonna have enough juice to start your bat you know start your engine after sitting for a little while if in the event your starter battery is dead but you've got juice in your auxiliary battery you can bridge the connection and when you bridge that connection you can actually bas you know, basically jump start the vehicle with your own extra battery so that's kind of cool I haven't had to do that yet but I'm kind of curious to see if it actually works um, if I ever get in that situation so let me show you everything under the okay, hood okay so if you look right here this is my starter battery and it's just the battery that came on the van I don't know how old it is, um, but you know it's not very old. It was on the van when I bought it. And down here is my battery isolator. I'll try to, you know, get you a picture of it off the internet, or you could check out my blog at www.rubbertramprenegade.com. That will actually have some pictures uh, more in detail, and I, I tried to list out everything I used. I, for my wire here, I used I think it's a four gauge wire. It's rated for three, yeah, it's four gauge. It's rated for 300 amps. It's basically stereo wire. Um, I ran it. You've, you've got two p big posts here. Two of them go to your batteries. You've got a ground. And this, I think, is 16 gauge I used for my ground, 16 or 14. And then here's the power wire, and this goes to what they call a true ignition source. So basically, the next thing I have here is you've got your power wire this wire goes to my starting battery and this wire here goes over this way to a fuse and this is a 200 amp fuse so when it's coming from a stinger isolator it's fused but right before you get to your battery you want to get your fuse as close to the battery as you can now I will point out while I'm under here the manufacturer's instructions call for a fuse on this side too, but because it's so close to the battery, I didn't put a fuse. Um, I've got some experience with stereo installations and other friends have told me, you know, as long as you've got it close enough to the battery, you shouldn't need a fuse. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you don't do it. it. It's your call. If you feel more comfortable putting a fuse there, put a fuse there. I've got my 200 amp fuse here and my power goes into my battery. And then from this hot side of the battery, it goes back through another fuse. And I'll try to zoom in there. It's an 80 amp fuse that goes back to my power.
panel. Um, the other wire here is a ground wire. I used, I didn't bother with red and black. I just used the same for everything. I put my ground, I just went, ran it down, found a place on the frame to ground it to. Now, this wire here is a little tricky to show you, but I'll do my best. It goes down under here, down along the firewall, and then to the frame, all the way back to my electrical cabinet. So I'll try okay, to show you so that. I don't know if you can see that. The wire comes from under, um, the fire, from the firewall there and runs back up the frame and as it comes up the frame I've got it going in to two fittings there hope you can see that um, there's two cord grip fittings I just drilled holes through the floor there there's plenty of room under here um, if I really wanted to I could have built a tray right here and mounted the battery under the van. If I decide to get more batteries later on, I might do that and just run them right underneath here. Okay, so I showed you underneath how they just go right up to the floor and they come back right here by my seat. Right behind my driver's seat is where they come in. If you look down there, I've got those cord grips I was talking about. They just come up in here. One's hot. Um, one's coming from the battery, one's actually just coming from the frame because I needed it ground. And since the battery is grounded to the frame, the best place for this is, you know, the frame. So I've got one hot, one ground. They come up the cabinet here and they, they go into the cabinet. I've got some holes drilled. They just go in my cabinet. So I'm going to walk around and show you inside the cabinet and I'll show you from there, from the cabinet back. If you look in here, these are the battery cables that are coming from the floor, coming up through the floor, and they come in that side of the cabinet behind my seat, and they come in. One goes to this post, one goes to this post, and remember, this one just goes back to the frame, so I've got a good ground from the frame. This one goes to the battery. This wire here, this red wire you see, and this black wire come back around to the side to this inverter. So basically I've just got my inverter wired into those posts there and that works out it works out fairly well. So when you come back over here you'll see I've got a fuse panel. This fuse panel here I've got a hot wire that comes over does power and then I've got them jump to every fuse that way this side of the fuse every fuse is hot and then on this side it just goes to whatever accessory I want to run. This is the same way. It's just a ground strip. I've got a ground wire and then it jumps over to each one and then my ground, I just ground into it. Um, so, like I said, everything that I have is on a different fuse. Everything has its own fuse. I could probably, um, probably consolidate some. I have some lights on their own fuse that I could probably put on, you know, the same fuse. If I run out of room, I might do that. Right now I have one fuse left and I'm planning to use it for my refrigerator. So, you know, these lights up here, you know, I could I could probably consolidate those with the lights back there. Um, they could probably be on the same fuse because I'm probably not going to use those at the same time, you know, more than likely. And if I do, it's not going to be for a long period of time. And as long as my fuse is large enough, the next thing that I matter. have is my fan. You'll see my fan up there. This it's not the fantastic fan. It is a Max Air fan. It's very similar to the fantastic fan, but it's a 10-speed fan. It it works very well. It puts out a lot of air. You know, it pulls air out and in depending on what I need. Um, it it works really well. These lights over here, you'll see on the sides. Those are the lights that I I think I showed you. Uh, before but they switch colors they've got a remote here and you can basically just check pick whichever color you want you got to point it at the sensor which is over here in the corner you'll see that little eye right there that's the sensor for it so if I point there and push a color I can change the colors um, I'm just gonna leave them on white for right now um, over here I've got more lights just like the other ones and like I said they're on their own separate fuse I probably could put them you know I probably could put them on 
the same fuse together. I just chose not to. Uh, let me prop the camera up here. Um, so basically, that's my that's my electrical setup. It's not it's you know not too complicated. I do have a battery gauge, and I've got it on a switch, so I can turn the switch on and see you know how full my battery is. So basically, anything you're gonna run. 12 volt you need a ground and you need a hot and all you need to remember is that your hot needs to go from the battery post to the fuse on the bottom side and then from the other side you're going to go from that to your accessory if your accessory has a switch on it if not you'll want to go from your fuse to a switch and then the hot side of the switch to your accessory and then make sure you ground you know the other side of the switch so you know, do your research, make sure the wire that you're using is rated for what you're, you know, trying to do. That's the that's the important thing and the fuse. Make sure your fuse is rated for what you're trying to do. If you follow those main things, you'll be fine. Um you you shouldn't have any problems. So, I hope you like this video. I hope you found it informative. Be sure to check out my blog, uh my website www.rubbertramprenegade.com. You'll find a picture I've got a picture there of everything that I bought and and the build as I, you know, progress through it. So if you want pictures, if you if you follow along with pictures better, be sure to check that out. I do put other things on the blog that I don't necessarily put on my videos. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. So keep coming back for updates. I'll try to get the next video up as soon as I can and um hopefully I'll get to, you know, get on the road and do some camping and get some actual decent videos of some you know cool places um, I want to share all the places that I go with you guys so um, be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on things thanks for watching